Hello, in this video, I'm gonna go through the Honeywell T4R programmable wireless room thermostat. I'm gonna go through everything that you're gonna to need to know about this thermostat. I'm gonna show you what you get in the box. I'm gonna go through this startup wizard and what those various functions means in that. I'm gonna show you how to program it for your times and your temperatures. I'm gonna show you how you operate it. Of course, this unit has a few extra functions and I'll show you what all those are. And finally, I'll show you how you can go into the parameters where you can change some additional settings. Now, I want to let you know I've made several other videos all about these programmers. Now, this video is all about the T4R. Now, you may or may not be aware there is also the T3R. Now, you might be wondering what the difference is between the 3R and the 4R. Well, the 4R is about £120, whereas the T3R is only about £80. So you can see there is a fair difference between these two programmers. So I have made a video just comparing these two programmers. If you want to know more about the T3R, now I've made a video all about the T3R, how to program it, set it up and wire it in. And finally, I've made a video all about the binding. That's a wireless connection between the two of them. So if you ever find these two units are no longer talking to each other, then I've made a detailed video on how to reconnect these two units back together, which is called binding. In the description below, you will find links to all the programmers I have mentioned, along with links to all the videos. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find my video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. That will also help others to find the video. And of course, you can click subscribe if you want to see more help videos. And of course, share the video with your friends. And like I say, a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation to my Toolbox Fund. Right, now let's get on with the video and show you all about that programmer. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video, or in the cards above. So here we go then, this is the Honeywell Home T4R thermostat, wireless programmable thermostat. Now as you saw from my intro, there are several different models of this thermostat. You can get the T3 and the T3R and then the T4 and the T4R. What the R stands for is radio. So if you want to use the wireless version, then this is the version you would go for. But if you already have a thermostat on the wall like this, and it's hardwired in, then you can use the T3 or the T4. You would just take this unit off and then wire the T3 or the T4 in its place. Obviously you can't move the unit around then, it's fixed to the wall, but it is a much cheaper and easier installation. Obviously, if you are going to take this option, then make sure that you isolate your boiler and you turn the mains off because these units normally run on 230 volts. OK, so let's find out what's in the box. So when we open it up, we can see the first thing is some instructions. So we have the instructions for use. They're the ones on the top here, the ones in color. And we've got a single use bit of plastic here. I think that's a bit unnecessary. Then we have the installation guide in the black and white. And then we've just got a little bit of warranty slip here as well. Now the instructions are quite good. I've had a look through them. They are all in English and they are quite detailed. So that should help you when you're trying to set up your programmer. But you're not gonna really need them. So put them somewhere safe with your boiler instructions. And I'm gonna run through it and explain to you exactly what's what. So you know exactly how to use your programmer. So let's continue into the box and this is the receiver unit. Now this unit will be wired in next to your boiler or next to your heating controls. It should be about one foot away from any metal objects like the boiler casing. Now on the front there you'll see there's a little wireless symbol there with a light on it. There's a button to manually override the programmer and there's a reset button. When we look at the back of the receiver we can see you could run the wires in through the back or up through the bottom of the receiver unit. So let's put that to one side and in here we have the programmable room thermostat. On the front of the thermostat, there's a piece of plastic to protect the screen. And then inside the box, we've got the stand, we've got the wall plate and some screws. Now you get two packs of screws. You get one pack with the clamps in to clamp the wires into the receiver unit. And then the other pack is just some screws. So you can screw the wall plate or the receiver unit to the wall. Now, when we turn the unit over, we will then see that there are two AA batteries already fitted in the thermostat. Then all we need to do is to remove this piece of card and then the unit will then power up. Now, let's just peel this bit of plastic off the front here and you can see the unit. It's got a nice, smooth, shiny finish to it. 
Before I power the unit up, I just want to show you that we can fit this to the wall if you want to. So we have this wall plate here. You screw that to the wall and then the unit would just slip onto it and you just click it down into position. Uh, obviously, you're not going to move it around then. It's going to be fixed on the wall. But if you've got a, a person who maybe keeps dropping it or losing it, then this is a good option. You can fit it on the wall and it's going to keep your unit safe. Following the instructions, it says to wire this unit in first before we go powering up this unit. Now you can see I've already wired this unit up. Now if you want to watch my video on the wiring up, then you can click on the card above now or down in the description. Now I'm going to switch this unit on, then we're going to see the power light start flashing here. Okay, so let's switch this on. And then we have to wait a few seconds. And there we go. Now this light is now flashing. It's flashing because it's looking for a signal to come from the thermostat. Now, as soon as we power this up, then we should see this light stay on permanently. OK, and that's when you have a connection. Now, before we go powering this up, we want to just check that this unit is turning the boiler on and off. So if we push this button here like that, that will then bring your boiler on or it should bring your boiler on. So if you push it again, it should then turn your boiler off again. OK, so just test to make sure that your boiler is working. Um, and then whenever the uh, heating this unit here tells the boiler to come on, you will see this light here come on. OK, and if any time if you do manage to break this unit or lose it, um, then you can just come to this button here and push it. Obviously, if you lose it, then uh, after a short time, this unit will send a signal and it will override this and turn this off. But if you've broken it, then uh, this is a handy little way of being able to control your boiler without this unit being on. When you're going to position the receiver unit, make sure it's 300 millimeters or one foot away from the boiler case or other metal pipes. Sometimes that's quite hard to do and I have to install them closer and they've worked absolutely fine, but that's the recommended distance. Also, when you install it, make sure you do not lean anything up against this button because it's going to turn your boiler on when you don't want it to. And now we're just going to power up this unit here. So when we turn the unit over, we can see there is this little uh, paper st strip here. So now all we need to do is to just pull that out of there carefully like that. OK, let's just pull that out and then we turn it back over. Now, if you don't see anything come on, just wiggle these batteries around. I find this a couple of times. It doesn't always make a good connection to so just wiggle those backwards and forwards. And then we should see some power come on here like that and there we go and then we got some power on there and then straight away as soon as we've got power on it we can see this has stopped flashing and has turned solid green now we know we have a connection between the two we now just need to go through the setup wizard Now the setup wizard is, is really simple whenever you take the batteries out of this unit and then you replace them it will always go back up to this setup process here and it's nice and simple you can go through it fairly quickly uh, without too much problem at all what I particularly like about the Honeywell units is everything is pretty much intuitive. OK, you've got three buttons along the bottom here. One, two, three. And you've got the plus button and the minus button here. Now, at the moment, this icon isn't lit up, uh, but I'll show you what that one does in a minute. But at the moment, we can see we have a home button. We have a tick button for OK. And we have the calendar symbol here. It's telling us year and obviously the year is flashing at 16. So we need to change that year now. So we're going to just press the plus button and you can see obviously that this lights up now and we can change that and now it's now 20 so I'm going to press tick because it's year 20 we're now in month 12 so you can see I've set that to 12 and now I'll press tick again see the little tick button tick and that's going to take us to the day where it's on 30 now I could go plus all the way through but I can also press press minus to take me to 30 and press tick again and now it's saving those settings we can now change it from a 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock. So we could just press plus and that's be a 12 hour clock. So you'd have AM and PM or you can have it 24 hour clock, whichever you prefer. And I'm going to change this to a 12 hour clock. So there we got 12 hours. And again, we just press tick again to select that. And now we've just changed the time. OK, so we go from now it is one uh, forty five. So I'm going to change, you can see it's already on one. So I'm going to leave it on one. Press tick and then again, I'm going to just minus that because it's quicker to go backwards to 45. There we go. And press tick again. And you can see it's also highlighted here with the clock here. So you know you're setting the clock settings here. OK, and press tick again. It saves that. 
And now we can set the way the programmer operates for the number of days. So at the moment it says five and two. So what it's telling you is that you can have five days set on one time setting and then two days, the weekend, set on another time setting. So uh, so if you work a normal working week and you want to have the time different on the weekend, this is the selection you would make. Now you can change this again by pressing plus or minus. So I'm going to press it to one day. And you can see now up in the top here, we've got one to seven, that being the days. And there's a picture of a calendar there also. So now we've got seven days, which are all going to be the same. Okay, but uh, I, so maybe if you're a, um, someone who's at home all the time, you don't work um, and you just want every day to be the same, then you would choose this option. Um, and if you want to do every day differently, um, you can see now we have the seven days and it's just flashing on day one. So you can set every day differently. But I'm going to change it to five and two. So I'm going to press the tick button again. And then we have the number of time settings you can have during a day. Now you can change this, this later or you could just take the batteries out and start from the beginning if you want to. But I'm going to change this to six time settings because this programmer will let you have six time settings. And uh, if you do change your mind, you can also press this little back arrow here. So like that, and that will take us back to there. OK, but I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press tick. So I'm going to change this from four time settings to six time settings. You'll see in a minute where I prefer to have six time settings, but obviously it gives you much more options during the day. And again, press tick again and I'm saving those time settings. So after you finish setting the time on this thermostat, this is the way you will normally see your display. Now in the top there, we have the little wireless symbol showing that you have a connection. You have the auto symbol here. We have the, obviously the plus and minus buttons here. We have a menu button here. If I push that, that will take you to the menu. And we're gonna go back again. If you push this button here, it'll take you to back. If you push this button now, it takes you to manual or to auto. If you push this button here, this is the on off button. And then we also have the time and we have the set temperature and we have the room temperature. So now I'm going to show you how to fit the stand. It's pretty straightforward. We just need to turn the unit over like this. We just pick the stand up and it will just slip onto the back of the unit like this. So you just put it on the back there. It just slots into place and then we just push it up and listen for a click. And there we go. And then we just carry the unit around and we can just put it anywhere in the house, okay? Wherever it feels comfortable. Uh, ideally, you don't want to put it in a place where it's hot. So you don't want to put it above a radiator, above your TV, in the sunlight, or in any drafts either. So if, if there's a very cold breeze coming in somewhere, it's going to affect the unit and it's going to be turning your heating on or off uh, when you don't want it to. So, so put it somewhere, uh, it's usually about a meter and a half off the floor, but just somewhere where it's going to have a nice ambient temperature. So I'm now going to show you how you set up your central heating timing. So now all we need to do is to press this button here. OK, so I push that one. That takes us to the menu. And the first item on the menu is the program. So we're going to change the program. So we're going to press tick here because I want to change that. And now it's flashing here. The days are at the top here showing a calendar and it's showing Monday to Friday. So yes, I want to change those settings. So I'll press tick again. And now you can see it's come up with uh, with our six time settings during the day, P1, P2, P3, and P4, 5, and 6. And it's also shown us the times which we set it. So P1 at the moment is set from 6.30 in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning. And it's at 21 degrees. Now I'm going to change this. So I'm going to press tick because I want to change it. And I'm going to change that to 7.30. There we go, 7.30. I'll press tick. And now I'm going to change the next time setting to nine that's when my kids go to school so i then wanted my heating to go off then or the temperature to go down i'll press tick again and now i can adjust the temperature now my wife's going to want it a little bit warmer so i'm going to change the temperature in the morning to 22 and that's a nice warm temperature and i'm going to press tick again then it gets to its next time setting now so you can see it's flashing on the p2 and it says from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock uh, and it's at 16 degrees. Now I'm going to press tick because I'm happy with that. I'm also happy at 12 o'clock and 
we've got the temperature at 16 degrees. Now this is where I find people get a little bit confused about how to set these new modern programmers. Now you can see that it's flashing on 16 degrees. Now if you go to work all day and you don't want your heating on at all during the day, then you wanna set that heat temperature down low. So I always recommend setting it to 10 degrees. So you can turn that right down to 10 degrees like that and that will ensure that your heating is not gonna come on during the day. Okay, now if you are at home all day and then you might want your heating on, so say my wife's at home, she doesn't want it too cold, uh, but we don't want the heating to go off completely either. I could put this temperature up to say uh, 18 degrees or 19 or maybe even 20. Okay, so I can leave it at 20 degrees and then if the house goes below 20 degrees, then the heating will come on. So just bear that in mind, whenever you set this temperature here, uh, when you don't want your heating to be on, make sure you set the temperature down nice and low. Now I don't want my heating on to be on during the day, so I'm gonna turn that right down to 10 degrees, like that, and then press tick, and that'll ensure my heating doesn't come on. Now I've got a lunchtime setting, or you could set this another time during the day, but from 12 o'clock to two o'clock. So I'm gonna press tick. Yes, I want to change that. And then two o'clock, I'm gonna change that for just one hour. Okay, this is a lunchtime setting, so it just warms the house up. I'm going to leave that at 21 degrees. So I'm going to press tick. 21, happy with that. Press tick again. And now it does my next time setting in the afternoon. So I'm going to press tick. Yes, I want to change that from 1 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And that's uh, too late for me. I want the heating to come on. The kids come home at 4 o'clock, so I want the heating to come on at 4. So let's change this to 4. There we are, 4 o'clock in the afternoon press tick and again I don't want heating on during the afternoon okay so I'm going to set that right down low again right down to 10 degrees and that will ensure that my heating won't come on in the afternoon I press tick again and now we can see I've got my next time setting from 4 o'clock to 10 30 at night so I want to change that so happy with 4 o'clock just there I'm going to press tick and then 10.30, that's a little bit late. I think the heating can go off before then. I'm gonna change that to actually to 9.40 and I'll press tick again. Okay, but on the evening, I want it to be a bit warmer, so I'm gonna set that to 22 degrees. I press tick again. And then we get to the uh, last time setting. So this is our time setting all through the night. So it's showing from the last time setting, which is 9.40 to 6.30 in the morning. And you can see it's flashing on our last one there. So I'm gonna press tick again here, because I wanna change that. And then it jumps straight down to the temperature. Now again, if you don't want your heating to come on at night, and I certainly don't want my heating to come on at night, because I'm wrapped up in bed, and I'm all nice and warm. So. I don't need the heating on, so I'm gonna make sure I put that temperature right down low because I don't want the heating to come on at night. I'm gonna save energy. So press tick, and then it'll then go to my Saturday and Sunday settings. So yes, I want to change those. So I'm gonna change that. And our first time setting again. Yes, I want to change that. Now I don't get up so early on the weekend, so I'm gonna change that to now, say, eight o'clock in the morning. Press tick. I'm gonna leave that at 10 o'clock. I think 10 o'clock is a better setting. Okay, but I still want it to be nice and warm in the morning. So 22 in the morning. And then because I'm gonna be home all day on Saturday, I'm gonna leave my heating turned up a bit. So from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, so tick okay from 10 to 12. I'm gonna put my heating, press tick again, up to, and I keep it ticking over at around about uh, 20 degrees. So my house is gonna be nice and warm all day. Tick, okay, my lunchtime setting, I'm gonna keep that the same as well. Okay, so I'll press 12, two, two, I'm gonna leave it at two, because I'm just gonna change this down to 20 again, because I'm probably fairly active on a Saturday, moving around a bit. So again, the afternoon setting, exactly the same, I'm gonna, but I am gonna change this one here again. So the later the setting, I'm gonna change it to four o'clock again, like that. Press tick, and put that up to 20 again. Press tick, and then my evening setting, when I sit down to watch TV and relax, I'm gonna press tick from four o'clock to 11 o'clock, still a bit late for me. I'll have my heating go off a bit sooner. So I'm gonna say 10.30, press tick. Okay, and I want my house to be nice and warm one evening, so 22 degrees, press tick. 
and then we've got the nighttime setting and again I don't want my heating on to come on at night I'm still wrapped up in bed nice and warm so I'm going to put that heat in right down so it does not come on at night and press tick again and now it's saving that set settings so that was it now set my week up Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday now our programmer is all set up and ready to be used now on the display here we can see we have our wireless symbol showing here we have our auto symbol showing there we have a menu key here we have a manual and auto button here and our on off button here we have the time here and we have the room temperature now it's showing 27 degrees because i'm holding this unit and it's making the unit really hot so it's not really 27 degrees in here okay and we've also got uh, the set temperature so it's in auto now and i just set that temperature to be during the afternoon to be at 10 degrees and you can see the set temperature is at 10 degrees now you say you come home from work early and you want to put your heating on because it's a bit chilly all you need to do is just come to these plus or minus buttons and you can just push that button and turn the temperature up you don't have to go into the programmer or anything you just turn the temperature up like this so i'm going to have to take this above 27 degrees because the unit's really hot and we'll take it up to say 30 degrees just over 32 and then it'll stay at that until it reaches its next time setting and you can see there's a little clock there we'll then see a little flame appear here and the receiver unit has come on okay so if we want to turn that back down again again we can just put that back down again to whatever temperature we want okay and it'll stay at that until it reaches its next time setting now any time of day also if you just want to cancel that you can see there's a little clock there so if we just push the middle button here that will then cancel it so push that you can see the little clock's gone away and it's gone back to its auto setting and like i set it earlier it's at 22 degrees so the house has gone to that setting on the auto setting so this unit has another little handy function for instance if you have your heating on all day long on a saturday for instance and you're going to go out and you don't want the heating to be on whilst you're out but you do want it to be on when you come back home again so what you could do you could just set your temperature down low maybe so you could just turn it down to say 15 degrees so it's about there and then we can push this little button here now this allows us to add a number of hours to our time setting so it's just like a timer so we could then say set that to four hours we press tick and then the unit will count down as a timer and then revert back to the program i go uh, so that's a handy little function uh, if you want to just cancel that you just push that little button there again so just push that and then that goes away and it goes back to auto again and we'll just continue running the program likewise you could put the temperature up so if you're going to stay up late you're going to watch a film or something uh, but you want to make sure that your heating goes off at, at night you don't want to forget to turn it back on you could put your temperature up nice and hot keep it nice and warm but i only want it on for a, an hour or so so you could just put hour two hours whilst you watch the film and then press the tick button and then it'll just count down and then go back to the program and turn itself off at night so like i said that's a handy little function if you uh, need to use that press it again to cancel now also anytime we can push this button in the middle here so if we push this one you can see the manual lights up there so i push it again it goes back to auto or to manual to auto to manual now once in manual you literally just set the temperature and it'll run at that 24 hours a day until you turn it off again okay so some of my older customers they just carry this unit around they take it up to bed with them they turn the heating down at night because they don't want it on at night and then when they want to get up in the morning they just come to unit again and they just put the temperature back up again and if that's the way you want to use it then that is absolutely fine okay whatever works for you what is what i say so we just put that back up again like that again you can see the unit will come on a little click and then the heating will come on okay so that's how manual works fairly straightforward okay we're going to put it back to auto again like that and again you can see it's gone back to our set temperature of 10 degrees now at any time of day also we can just turn the heating off we can push this button here push that and i'll see it's fairly straightforward then it says off okay so in the summertime you turn it off or maybe if you don't want to use it you're going out for the day just push the off button so you go on and off leave it on okay 
So if we push this button here, that is our menu button. So we push that and then we can see we have the programmer here. So it says program. If we push the plus, that'll take us to the time. So you can set the time as it says. Okay, press plus again. You can set the date. Again, you just press the tick button. And then we have the away. So this is a, like a holiday button. If you press tick here, okay, we can set the number of days which you go on holiday. So say you go skiing, you can press, I want to go skiing for seven days or a winter holiday. You press tick. The temperature you want to keep the house at, so 10 degrees. I'm going to keep it a bit warmer because I don't want it too cold. Say 15. I press tick. And now it, those time settings are saved. And now as you see here, we've got the holiday symbol come up. Uh, or suitcase and then it's going to stay at 15 degrees and it'll stay at that and, and count down and then when it's finished counting down it'll revert back to the programmer so you'll come back to a nice warm house instead of a freezing cold one so that's also a useful little feature if you have winter holidays right to come out of holiday mode we do need to go back into the menu again we do need to scroll across to our holiday mode and we press tick to go into it and that's now turned holiday mode off. So now we can go into menu again and we can go along. So we've got a time, we've got a date, we've got the holiday, a wave button, and we've also got lock. Now lock means you can then lock the unit. So the unit is locked and it doesn't matter what buttons you press, the unit is not gonna operate. Now to turn that on and off, obviously you just press the tick button, but you do need to know how to turn this off because there's nothing to indicate how to turn the lock off. So I'm going to say, yes, I want to lock the unit. So I'm going to press tick again. And now it's saving that. And you'll now see it, there is a lock symbol in the display. And now it doesn't matter what I push. I cannot adjust anything. It's all locked. OK, so now we need to turn uh, the lock function off. So what we then need to do is to push this button here and this button here at the same time for three seconds. So we need to hold them both together, push one two three and there we go and now we can now adjust the settings again as before so just to demonstrate that again we can go into our menu here we can go plus to the lock we press tick i want to lock it lock it the unit is now locked and saved we want to come out a lock we just push these two buttons Two, three, and there we are, and the unit is unlocked. So in lock, it doesn't matter whether you're in manual or auto, you can't adjust the temperature. It's now locked, okay? And exactly the same, you need to, if you're in manual, you still need to push these two buttons for three seconds until the lock symbol goes away, and then you can release them. All right, so I want to show you this quickly. You can see there is a warning triangle here, and the wireless symbol is flashing there. That is because I've turned off the wireless receiver unit. OK, you can see there's no power on there. The lights aren't on. So now we have these warning symbols warning you. So if ever you see these on here and I just push this button to light up the display so we can see. So if you ever see this warning triangle here and this one here flashing, you'll then need to go and investigate to find out why you've no longer got connection with this unit because your heat is not going to work unless you have connection. If you do find you lost your wireless connection between your programmer and your receiver, then of course I made a video on how to reconnect these two together. So on this unit, there are some additional parameters which we can go into, which will let us change individual settings, which are not in the startup wizard. So the clock here, for instance, is a 12 hour clock. Now we can change that to a 24 hour clock or a 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock. But we need to go into the parameters to do that. And to do that, all we need to do is press this plus button here and the menu button and hold those for three seconds. One, two, three. And now we've gone into those additional parameters. Now we can't tell what these individual settings are. We do need to get the instruction manual and have a look through there and see what the individual parameters are. So for instance, one you may consider changing is the upper temperature limit, the maximum temperature you can set the unit to. You can see that set as 35 degrees, but uh, you could set it down to as low as 21. So someone would never be able to turn the heating up too high. Now that's not something I would do, but to change that, we need to go to 5UL. Now we go into the unit here and we scroll down to 5UL like that. Oh, gone past it. Go back. 
and there you are at 5 UL and you can see that it's 35 degrees now we can then put the temperature down to whatever you like so say 22 but I'm not going to do that so I'm going to put that back up to 35 like that but one you may want to change is 11 CL so let's go down to 11 CL now this is where we change the 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock so if we look at the bit of paper we can see that it says 0 is 24 hour and 1 is 12 hour so I just change that to 0 then I click home and then that saves those settings and now when we look at the clock we can see it's now changed to a 24 hour clock so that's how you change the additional parameters in this unit but like i said you're not likely to need to do that because when you remove the batteries and put them back in again you go through all the standards parameters which you should need to change right that's about it then so I do hope my video has been helpful to you if it has then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up that will also help others to find the video and you can click the link here which will take you to my next video which is all about the t3r and the t4r comparing the two together and of course you can click subscribe if you want to see more help videos and there's always my toolbox fund bye for now and i'll see you next time